Awesome. So let, let's look forward. Obviously, uh, Coinbase today, um, and, and I probably should caveat this entire conversation. Uh, we have um, some exposure to Coinbase uh, financially. We're not direct investors in the company, but basically we've invested in uh, somebody who's invested in uh, the company. But where do they go from here, right? In terms of, uh, they, it's an eight plus billion dollar company based on public uh, uh, reports, but do they continue to stay private forever? Do they have aspirations to go public? Do they tokenize the company's equity? I think one time Brian said something about, you know, that would be like the most Coinbase thing to do. Um, kind of what, what, what's the conversation around the company uh, from that standpoint? Yeah, well, insiders told me the plan was to go public this year. But, you know, like everything else in the pandemic, you know, if life is on hold, um, you know, but unlike so many other unicorns, I mean, they are, you know, profitable most quarters so they can. And I think you put your finger on it. The question is not, you know, if or when, it's how. And I talked to Fred Urson recently and, you know, asked him this, like, what's it going to look like? Are you going to do a blockchain token? And he said, yeah, it'd be pretty boring if we just did a conventional NASDAQ IPO. And I think there's so many people because they are, you know, a lot of people hate Coinbase, but you know they're they're the industry leader. They're the the standard bearer for the industry. So I think it'd be very brutally disappointing if they just did something boring. So I think it's just how much you know how quickly they can get the regulatory ducks in a row. And you know what I hear in the company is they want to do some hybrid listing of you know they'll float some shares like normal, but also put a bunch of those on a token and do you know this sort of a ICO meets IPO. And I can't wait to see the details. And that's what they hope to do. But who knows? I mean, maybe their investors will get impatient and just push them out the door. But I think the crypto world's really hoping for a, uh, you know, a, a Coinbase token. Yeah, and, and it's interesting, too, because I wonder if there's a, uh, a day where we see a Coinbase equity token trading on Coinbase, right? Which, which kind of leads to the question of uh, they historically have uh, listed assets that are not securities. Um, and, and I think that's, you know, as you mentioned, kind of part of that uh, underwriting process and, and really kind of trying to stand the right side of the regulators. Does the company eventually end up listing kind of commodities, currencies, uh, and securities all in this digital format, all in one location? Or, or how do you think that kind of plays out uh, based on the conversations you've had? Yeah, you're, you're, that's prescient. I mean, I think you're looking into the future and that's what the future is going to be. You know, I think we're going to see Nike and Apple stock and other equities, you know, traded as tokens because it just makes so much sense. It's so much more efficient. It's more secure. Um, who will be doing that? I don't know. Possibly Coinbase, but we could also see, you know, the big broker. We could see Intercontinental Exchange trying to buy Gemini or Coinbase and, you know, see a period where we have, you know, hybrid share listings for a while. But I, I think no doubt, you know, I, you know, I don't know what your guess is. I'd say maybe within 10 years, we'll see that. Yeah, look, I, I personal, my personal opinion is that we will see stocks, bonds, currencies, and commodities all digitized, right? Kind of the technology layer will be the same. Uh, and it just generally makes sense. We're kind of seeing this, right? If you take uh, some of the companies we see that are focused on like millennial investing and, and things like that, they're trying to put various asset classes together on the same platform. Uh, that's a little bit different, but, but still directionally uh, getting towards where you, know, you could buy Bitcoin, buy a stock or buy something else all in one location. Uh, it just seems that's the way the future is going to play out, but I, I, don't, I don't know, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, technology is inevitable. You know, remember we had the internet and we realized things were going to go digital, you know, and it logically it should happen the next year. In some industries, it took them 20 years. And, you know, but I, I just can't see going backwards. This stuff just makes so much sense. But who's going to do it? I don't know. Will, will Coinbase morph into become the, you know, New York Stock Exchange of the future? Will they get acquired? You know, and then also the other people big in this game is, uh, you know, Facebook with their Libra token. You know, I, I, I think it's inevitable that Apple and Amazon are going to start tokenizing stuff too. You know, there's, and, you know, government, central banks, it's, it's kind of a, a jump ball out there. But I think you're absolutely right. All this is going to happen. But Who's going to pull it off first? I don't know. Yeah. In, um, I think it was 2017, maybe I tweeted and I said, look, you know, within the next 24 months, we're going to get um, large companies start to uh, issue these tokens. Uh, and my guess was actually uh, Tesla and Amazon. Tesla having like some sort of energy credit for the, the grid, right? So you actually have some um, incentive mechanism that, that's used there. Uh, and then Amazon, just from a, um, the idea that a gift card is basically a token, Right. I mean, yeah, it's a different technology form factor. And so you can easily see kind of this happening. Um, but I do think that uh, it's happened slower than people have thought. Right. It was kind of like in 17, everything looked like it was going to happen, you know, within 24 months. Now it's probably pushed out a little ways. Well, I mean, if someone's got to build the interface, the problem with it, I don't want to you know, insult the crypto community, but I think 
they're so in love with their own technology, their own culture. There's been a lag in building, you know, I mean, even with DeFi stuff, I try to cover it. And I mean, this, I theoretically, it's so cool, but I mean, you want me to get it, you know, browser add on and MetaMask and all the rest of it. And I mean, give me a break. This stuff has got to be, you know, an app. It's got to be as easy to use as any other app on my phone. And that's where I think the big corporates could have a role. I think Amazon, you know, Tesla, yes, given their unique corporate culture could do that. But, you know, I mean, we need those user interfaces and it's just, it seems a lot of crypto sometimes is insiders impressing each other with who can build the most, you know, kind of out there, technically sophisticated product. And we've got to remember, you know, most people, the stuff is just too hard. You've got to build it so it's accessible. The UI is so crucial. And, you know, I think, you know, you got to build the plumbing first and that's what's going on. But, you know, who's going to crack the code and make this mainstream accessible? I don't know. Could be Coinbase, could be Tesla, could be Amazon, could be Apple, could be Facebook, or some incumbent or some startup out there who's going to solve this all. But I, I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah. I mean, look, Coinbase, Gemini, I think part of what's made those companies so successful, right, is they basically made it look very similar to other brokerage type products, right? And so if you're, if you're used to kind of buying financial assets uh, on a platform, you now can do it here and, and they make it look uh, and feel very user friendly. But then you also have things like Cash App, right, that are just, you know, stupid simple. Yeah. Um, and, and they're kind of pulling other people in. I wonder what other trends, I'm kind of going away from Coinbase uh, to finish up, and, and you've covered, you know, crypto for a while now, and, and obviously seen everything from the early days to now. What are the other trends that are interesting to you? You mentioned DeFi, but are, are there other things that, that just kind of stick out to you or that you're paying attention to? Um, it's just, just an aside, you mentioned uh, Cash App Square. I was talking to a, a VC recently who just described it as a beast. And Dorsey's interest in crypto and the infrastructure they're building, it's subtle, but I mean, they've got a, a giant banking network, you know, so they, they're ones to watch. That would be really neat if they pushed the crypto ball forward. I could see them doing that for sure. You know, otherwise, I think the thing to watch right now is what comes out of the crisis. We've seen with the, um, you know, attempts to deliver funds you know, to, to businesses, you know, and within the last crisis in 2008, 2009, um, you know, we saw legislation that enabled the whole fintech industry to take off the PayPal's and things like that. So I'm watching to see if the lawmakers are smart enough to do something to, to facilitate how things are going to change. Um, you know, I think the way we pay is changing, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm Canadian. I'm surprised that the U S still doesn't, you know, have contactless payments, you know, Canada's had that for years, you know, everywhere else, Asia's miles ahead. And, you know, it's, it might take this health crisis to get people to stop swiping credit cards, you know, so I'm, I'm curious, a lot of the innovations in the rest of the world is going to come into America. And I'm always surprised about how cultural payment is just, you know, people pay very differently in Northern Europe and in Asia and Canada and America. So, you know, and obviously crypto is going to have a role to play in that as well. Um, I'm watching Facebook, intro, you know, closely because I think that that notion of, I know a lot of people hate it because it's centralized, it's not real crypto. That's true. But I think the more people get familiar with this, with tokens, with, you know, fungible wallets, you know, let, let's just get everyone on the platform and then educate them about, you know, having their own hardware wallet and stuff. So, sorry, that's kind of a stream of consciousness answer, but that's some of the things I'm looking at. And finally, central banks too, you know, I think, uh, you know, are they going to, you know, are we going to see, you know, what's, is China going to pull this off? Can you do it without turning it into a surveillance mechanism? I think that's going to be a big story in the next couple of years.